Hi everyone, I'm Charlotte Kilpatrick, reporting for Vaccine Nation from the World Vaccine Congress in Washington. I'm delighted that today we're joined by Dr. Mark Newman of Geovax. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Would you kindly just kick us off by introducing yourself and the role that you play within the organization? Sure. I'm Mark Newman. I'm a PhD immunologist from a long time ago. I am the chief uh, scientific officer, so I oversee pretty much all of the uh, programs in the early stage for design uh, and moving things into clinical trials. Once we get to that stage, they're handed off to the chief medical officer. Fantastic. I imagine you work very closely with the chief medical officer. I like to think he works for me, but he <laughs> thinks otherwise, but yes. I'm sure. So my first question is about the um, recent authorization, emergency use authorization for a monoclonal antibody for immunocompromised people. Can you tell me a bit about how this relates to your vaccine for immunocompromised people? So it doesn't actually relate, it's kind of the competitor product within the space. So the, the first generation vaccines um, are very effective for the general population, but there are certain segments of the population, cancer patients, cancer treatment patients, transplant patients, who aren't responding properly to uh, the COVID, approved COVID vaccines. So our niche approach here is to use a different technology to make a COVID vaccine that works in immune compromised individuals. So it's based on a viral vector that is approved as a smallpox vaccine for immune compromised individuals specifically. So we know that it's immunogenic in most of these individuals and it's also safe. So that forms the basis of the product. Now, the antibody treatment, this is a passive antibody treatment that FDA has approved. This is also for individuals who can't necessarily raise good immune responses on their own, specifically good antibody responses. The issue with the monoclonal antibodies is they're very, very specific. So these have to be adjusted to the new variant with each cycle. And there's been a couple of cycles uh, as we've gone from the original Wuhan strain all the way through now to Omicron you know, JN1. Our vaccine is designed to induce an immune response more to T cells uh, and antibodies, but T cells specifically, which are not variable in the, um, as the virus evolves. So it's, it's targeting conserved regions, uh, but we're also targeting conserved antibody regions. So as I said, we're not actually working with the monoclonal antibodies, but it's an alternative treatment. Uh, ideally, um, you won't need the antibodies if the vaccine works well in a particular patient. Absolutely. So could you tell us, you've touched on it a bit already, but could you tell us a bit more about why we need next generation COVID-19 vaccines? Well, the, the first generation products are, you know, are very effective, but they are focused solely on the S protein, the spike. And of course, this is the, the dominant antigen. It's the correct target to start with, but it's also a highly variable product. And so, for, and for some reason, immune responses generated by the first generation vaccines have been short in duration. They're not holding up, not a durable response. So next generation vaccines are being defined that will broaden the immune response, that will induce T cell responses as well as antibody responses and will induce more durable immune responses. And then in our case, also target these unique populations that need. So the transplant patients, the cancer treatment patients, things like that. So we didn't define the next generation world. Um, this is something that's been defined by, you know, the US government and BARDA for the programs we work with, EMA and, and uh, European governments. Uh, but the first generation worked very well, but with limitations, next generation is gonna try and correct those. Great, well, good luck with that. Can you tell us anything about any other products in the pipeline and any significant milestones that you've recently achieved? Well, for the COVID program, we finished our phase one trial that has been published, uh, working with our collaborators at City of Hope in California. We have three phase two trials ongoing. So one is in a chronic lymphocytic cancer patient, others are in a hemopoietic stem cell transplant patients, and a normal booster population. So we're targeting both niche market or, or populations where you're not getting good responses to the vaccine, but also um, you know, as a normal booster. So 
these studies are, are blinded as you go through the follow-up. So the, the critical milestones will be, you know, uh, breaking the blind and looking at the data. Data looks good at this stage of the game. We, we know what the test results are. We just don't know which patient population they go with. Now our backbone technology can be applied to multiple vaccines. So we have Ebola type of vac or vaccines for different types of Ebola viruses. Um, you know, the Sudan, Zaire, Marburg, uh, these have the opportunity to be used primarily as a booster at this stage of the game. Um, there's other products that are further advanced, so we'll see how those come out, but we're closing out those studies. The first steps in you know, non-human primates and we'll be publishing those results. So those are the, the programs that I'm really focused on. Fantastic. That's a lot to work on and we look forward to hopefully featuring some of those publications when they come out on our site. That would be appreciated. <laughs> no worries. So finally, what are you looking forward to at the Congress and is there anything you hope to have achieved when you leave? So this Congress in particular is heavy on the science and so in my business it's very much a luxury to be able to meet with and talk with other scientists and have them present their story uh, you compare it to your story, and then we've got this great trade show where we're meeting with all of our um, all of our contractors and uh, our suppliers. So this is a one-stop shop for us. It's, this is the best one of the year, and I really appreciate that it's back again after the COVID pandemic. We, we've watched it grow over the last couple of years, and I've been honored to uh, be invited to speak at a couple of sessions. So um, it's this is the high point for us. Well, we're very glad that you've joined us again and we look forward to welcoming you back soon. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you for inviting me.